All right. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good day, everyone. I'm Adam Ash. I work with the Balanced Scorecard Institute, uh, and I'm a senior consulting associate. Today, we're going to talk about OKRs versus strategy. Now, a lot of you may or may not know me, but one thing that you should know about me is that I love metrics. I love metrics because it's really important to know what we're trying to achieve, where we are, where we're going, and if we're uh, trying to, you know, we're getting to where we need to be. And metrics are really important for everything we do. There's no question about it. There's lots of kinds of metrics. There are metrics that tell us um, if our people or process or systems are, are performing to our needs, those are performance metrics or KPIs. And we have metrics that tell us if we're on track and if we're aligned to reach our goals. Those are kind of value metrics. Those are objectives and key results. Now, all these metrics are really important. There's no question about it that we need to actually define and measure where we're trying to go and what we're trying to achieve. That's just part of our daily existence. And KPIs are really important to tell us, are our systems working well? Are our products working well? Or is our technology, our uptime, our quality, our throughput, how many things we've produced? How much time did we spend working on it? How many people are working on it? How many, you know, all of those good things are part of our performance metrics. And we need performance metrics because those tell us are our systems and processes and people, are they working at the level that it's required for us to achieve what we're trying to achieve? There's no question that measuring performance is really important. On the other side, it's objectives and key results. And objectives and key results are super important and really great for defining what we're trying to achieve um, and the conditions of satisfaction of what we're trying to do. So how do we know when we're done? Well, we can look at our objective and key results and say, hey, this is something where the the outcome, the state we want to be in when we're when we're done with what we're doing. And here are the things that need to be true along the way uh, or when we're done so that we know we've completed what we're trying to complete. Uh, it's kind of obvious in a little way, right? To say, oh, if we have something written down and we say this is where we want to be where when we get there and we are and we've achieved our goal. And there's lots of different methodologies, including uh, including agile methodologies that lots of folks always say, uh, these are iterative methodologies. How do we know when we're done? Well, you know when you're done, if you actually write down, this is where we, when we've reached this state, we are done. Great. And lately, after the last few years, people have really been talking about OKRs. I love OKRs. OKRs aren't new, right? Our OKRs have been around for a while. Uh, and they really help us define things, right? They tell us, hey, what is our objective? Um, drive the company growth by expanding into new markets. That's something we can define and measure. So I know that there's something there right away. And then if I look at my key results, I can say, okay, here are the things I need to uh, need to be true for us to have said we've, we've achieved this. So achieving a 15% revenue increase or opening three new regional offices. All of those things are really important for us to know. And OKRs have become a really popular way to define and then track what we're trying to achieve in the organization. One of the great aspects of OKRs is how we can actually cascade and align them. So if I have this objective, uh, an, a leadership objective of expanding my company's uh, revenue, then another objective under that might be to create some new products to increase our revenue. So you can see how they kind of cascade, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But objectives are really um, what we're trying to achieve, the state that we want to be in, and the key results are how we determine, right, if we've gotten there. Here are the places we want to be. Here's how we're going to measure them. And metrics, again, are really important. We could measure uh, how many things we've produced. We could measure how many things, uh, how many people we have have working, we can actually measure, um, even more importantly, the impact of what we do, because those two types of metrics are really important. Our kind of leading indicators, what we build and deliver and see in front of us, and then our lagging indicators, 
did what we do help us achieve our goal? There's nothing wrong with any of those things. Those are great. OKRs give us a lot of the what we want to achieve. So when people say, what, do, what are we trying to do? Uh, and people say, I don't know. Well, then we write an OKR and we say, okay, here's an, here are the things we're trying to do. So we can have leadership OKRs coming from the C-suite or upper management. We can have financial OKRs. We could have support OKRs. Every part of the organization can have objectives and key results. Here are the things we're trying to achieve. And here's what states need to be true or what the metrics are, what the measurements are that we want to achieve to see them reduce the cost of live customer support, increase the number of customers that we uh, that we bring in through our website. All of those things are great and it makes perfect sense. There's only one little issue with that and that OKRs, although they give us a pretty good what we want to do and even conditions of satisfaction, they don't always give us a complete why. And this is the part of OKRs that fall short. OKRs are often, um, oops, I'm sorry. Sorry, something's going on here. Uh, OKRs are you know often local, right? So we talk about my group OKRs or my team's OKRs or my part of the organization's OKRs. Um, they're siloed often, so they're just in my group, so people outside my group don't know about them. Uh, because other people outside of my group or my immediate team don't know what my OKRs are, or if I'm a manager, I might not know what my OKRs are for my C-suite or my senior executives, um, we often duplicate OKRs. And because we duplicate OKRs, we duplicate efforts. So we're actually doing things in multiple places uh, at the same time for the same purpose. So we kind of re, you know, kind of waste resources. We ra waste people's time, we waste money, we waste hours in really helping to achieve our goals. Now, achieving the OKR might be great, but we don't always know why right? We're trying to achieve this thing. And people don't always understand what, why they're doing what they're, we're doing. Those are important things because when people understand how what they do is uh, applied to what we're trying to achieve, they ac actually can think of different ways or come up with different understandings or then seek out other people across the organization to help them. And OKRs don't necessarily create the conditions for that, which by the way is fine, because OKRs are what they are. They're a really great way to define what we're trying to achieve, what we want to see when we've achieved that, and then what those metrics are uh, along the way that we want to measure. Perfect. They're really great. But we're missing one thing, right? And there's a problem with that. The problem with the way we apply OKRs is that they're not strategy. Strategy is different. And to really be more specific, OKRs are not a strategy management system. So OKRs are perfectly great for what they are, but they're not really going to help us achieve our strategy unless we actually have a strategic framework to actually put them in. So strategy is the why we do what we do. Strategy is organizational. It's cross-cut. Strategy is really how we define our mission and our vision for our organization where we see ourselves in the future, three to five to X years out. Strategy is really meant to be cross-cutting, that everyone in the organization needs to be part of this. It's very rare that you work in one part of the organization, any organization, and that you don't actually need or interact with people from other parts. So why would we have an IT strategy separate from uh, a finance strategy? They really need to be part of the same organization and the same framework. Uh, strategy is for everyone. And what's important about that is the fact that no matter who we have in the organization, everyone should know what we're trying to achieve at any given time. I've been in many situations where people have learned the strategy and have had great, in, a great insight and then produced really great results because they knew what we we're trying to achieve as opposed to what we've always done or the limited amount of what they've understood. And so we can see a lot of unlocking of minds when we when we open up our strategy to the organization. And really, all of our organizations are people, right? We need, we have people, 
We've hired them for reasons. They have brains. We want to use their brains. And this helps us to actually do that. And ultimately, strategy helps us really align to what we're trying to achieve, right? And so uh, these objectives, these OKRs, which are usually siloed and very often local, strategy helps us actually create organizational or, uh, organizational. Uh, consistency, right? How do we actually bring across what we're trying to achieve to everyone? It's really the, a why for your what, right? So if the, the what is our OKRs, which are fine, um, we could do them, but OKRs can en actually end up being uh, against what our strategy is, right? So if I'm trying to build, let's say a tower and my OKR says, build a tower. So I build a tower. And as I build the tower, it starts leaning, leans, 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 right? Well, I built the tower. My OKR said build a tower. It said when it's this um, this tall, it could be done, right? How many floors we have? Um, and it's leaning, right? The problem with the leaning is we don't want a leaning tower. We want a straight up or down tower. Strategy is what helps us make sure that we're always aligned with the ultimate organizational goal if our vision is to build a really straight, super straight tower, but our OKR is to build a tower, those are two different things and we have to be specific. So OKRs are great. There's nothing wrong with them. We really want to use them as the, uh, an important tool to apply. And they definitely help us align uh, to one or two levels in the organization, making sure we're consistent and together. But what they don't do is bring the whole organization together. And that's the power of a strategic framework. It brings the whole organization together so that we're, the OKRs that we are working on are working in tandem. They're working together to help us achieve our goal. And it reduces the likelihood that we're going to reproduce things or work on things that actually might uh, impact each other or impede each other as we're trying to build and deliver. Strategy is great. I love strategy. Without strategy, we actually build things that we might not need. Or we can't say no when we have things that we want to stop doing, which is really important. Strategy should align always to our organization's vision and mission. And OKRs are a super, super important part of that strategic planning and execution. So if you think of strategy as defining and understanding our mission and vision, understanding the main areas that we want to be working within for this X period of time, the next uh, three to five years, let's say, then we can say, here are the objectives we're trying to achieve. But now when we look at our objectives and key results, they're organizational. We really understand what the whole organization is trying to achieve. So now when we cascade our OKRs, we're not cascading OKRs for themselves, OKR to OKR to OKR. We're actually cascading them to align with our strategy, mission, vision, OKR, objective, objective, objective that aligns with those things. This helps us understand that if something doesn't align the way we expect it to do, then maybe we shouldn't be doing it, or maybe something's wrong with our uh, initial assumption. Strategic planning helps us understand these things. So we do strategic planning by, uh, and then we're able to communicate our mission and vision and strategy to the organization. Very often with just using OKRs, since they're local and siloed, everyone doesn't understand them. Uh, or even know about them, and they certainly don't align to an organizational vision, that's not necessarily their purpose in and of themselves. They help us align to those things so we know that this is the work I'm doing, it's contributing to this other work, it's contributing to this other work, which then gives us the outcome, the impact that we're trying to achieve for the organization. It helps us prioritize. So just OKRs amongst themselves, we might prioritize leadership OKRs or financial OKRs. We might prioritize marketing OKRs or sales OKRs amongst themselves or technology OKRs. But in this sense, when we bring those OKRs together with a strategic framework, we're actually saying, how do we actually achieve our ultimate organizational goals and work together so that we our objective for finance and our objective for technology and our objective for uh, human resources, they're all aligned to achieve those ultimate organizational goals, which doesn't normally happen when we just apply OKRs uh, as a technique in our organization. And it helps us improve performance because now that we're tracking along with to the same thing with everyone that we're working with, it's easier to understand and 
also easier to see if we've achieved our goals. The other benefit, of course, is that when we actually align across the organization, we actually increase the number of people that are able to look at and help to solve our problems from different perspectives, from different points of view. You might have a marketing objective, but can you do the marketing objective without our technology organization? Can you do that marketing objective without our legal organization? So there are lots of different ways that we see that aligning our OKRs with a strategic framework gives us a better outcome. Strategy needs to consider the whole organization. We have to consider our financial aspects, our customer, our internal process, our capacity. So when we do a strategy, a balanced strategy, um, we look at these things. We look at our dimensions called perspectives because we want to make sure that our objectives are not just siloed or individual for a group or a person or a team. They're aligned with consideration for the whole organization. We can't just do technology things when we have to other do other things. We can't just do finance things just because. We can't just do marketing things. We have to consider what the ultimate goal is, what the ultimate vision is. And so our OKRs and objectives have to attach and align with those. So, the stra so now we have these OKRs and they're kind of the, the objectives that we're trying to achieve. And our strategic management system helps us connect those dots between the strategy, our vision, our mission, and our objectives, which were our OKRs, and then the actions we actually take to actually achieve our goals. So we have our strategy and our mission and vision. Here are the things we're trying to achieve. Here are the main focus areas we're trying to achieve them. We're considering everyone in the organization. And then we say, okay, here are the objectives. And then here is what we're going to do to achieve them, our projects, our initiatives. And we put those these things all together. We can see that we can actually see how our OKRs fit into a strategic management framework to allow us to not only achieve OKRs, achieve the results and the impacts that, that our OKRs have stated, but how these are aligned with a bigger organizational outcome. We can see that our OKRs are, for instance, our organizational capacity. So if we want to increase employee expertise, right, that helps us to optimize our people, which helps us to increase consulting knowledge and sharing, which helps us to improve our custom, customer experience, which helps us to increase revenue. And each of these objectives and key results is part of the organization, but they also consider how they impact our people, how they impact our process, how they impact our financial outcomes and how they impact the customer ultimately. And they help us communicate this. So it's not just OKRs now that we're trying to achieve, but it's a strategy utilizing OKRs as a way to help us achieve it. And communicating these things out help us become a more efficient organization. The more people that are aligned, the more people know what we're trying to achieve, the more it is that we stop or consider stopping things that we shouldn't be doing that don't align and continue doing things that do. Uh, and we also know when we've achieved our goals. OKRs are about metrics. So we want to make sure that we've aligned what those OKRs, the outcomes we're trying to achieve with metrics. So we know if we're actually on track to achieve them. It makes perfect sense. And ultimately we want to align them with our initiatives and projects, the things we actually do. So OKRs, again, are, are a kernel, a core of what we're trying to do, great, but they're not uh, in a, of themselves a strategic management framework. They are a great way to align things together. Uh, they're a great way to define what we're trying to achieve and get the value out. Uh, so we can say, here are the things we're trying to ultimately get to. We start with the end state, which is a, always a great way to do things and then work our well we're ourselves into it. But without this, these, this strategy to bring these components together, we often uh, misalign. We often go in different directions or wind up doing work that's not necessary. And this balanced strategy or these, this type of work is really sufficient for any type of organization. We can work with uh, nonprofit organizations. We can work with for-profit organizations. We can work with governmental organizations. We can work with military. It's the concept of how we actually bring our OKRs together, 
and how we align them to actually achieve these goals as an organization that becomes really important. And here's the thing. We want to cascade our OKRs within our system so we don't lose our alignment with our mission and vision, right? So we have our corporate objectives, great. We have our departments, so we cascade those, right? Corporate objectives down to departmental objectives. Here's what we are going to do to help achieve that. And then we get down to teams and people, right? So we can actually say, here's what the corporate objective is to grow our business by 25% in five years. Here are the departmental things. In this department, we're going to do some marketing campaigns. We think that'll help. In this department, we're going to make our technology more efficient and more effective so we can lower our costs and increase our bandwidth and so forth and so on. And then ultimately, we get down to the team. Uh, we, I, am going to do this, which is aligned with this objective, which is aligned with this corporate objective that's going to actually help us achieve our overall mission and vision. Good alignment helps us create focused, a strategy-focused organization, right? Everything we do, our OKRs have to not just align amongst themselves, but align to the ultimate strategy. So if we consider this corporate level, our corporate level, our tier one, originally we want to do our tier one strategy. Here's what we want to achieve for the organization. Here are our organizational objectives. Great. We bring those down, just like we said, to departments and units and groups, whatever they are. They could be business units, they could be departments. If we have a global organization, they can be geographical regions, but we bring those down. So we say, if our organizational objective is to increase our, our usership by 25%, then what am I going to do? And that's our tier two. Those are our departments. Those are the things we do. And then how who is gonna do the work and what work are they going to do? That's our tier three. So it involves everyone in the organization. It allows multiple viewpoints to understand what we're trying to achieve and how they can contribute. It involves cascading these things down, but we measure our own things. So we basically say, if I want to increase my people by 25%, my customers, then the things I do, we're going to measure how they impact that increase in customers. And that at the very work surface level, I know that what I'm doing is contributing to that. And that's really important. So it not only helps us align and do better work and get achieve better outcomes because we know ultimately what we're trying to achieve. But it also gives me a sense of belonging to the organization because I know that my part is attached to this big thing. And very often just using OKRs uh, doesn't really tell us. We know what we're working on, uh, but we don't know why we're working on it. And again, the, our strategy helps us with the why. Everyone can see how they can contribute. And if I can see how I can contribute. It gives me two things. It tells me, one, what my purpose is, but it also gives me the, the, the wherewithal to say, hey, this doesn't make sense. Or, oh, I, I have a solution that I was thinking about for that for the last two years, but I didn't know that was important or no one asked me. So you can see how we can understand that bringing our corporate strategy down to the people is really important so people understand it. And again, OKRs are a, an important part, a tool that we use in this, but they aren't of themselves going to do this. And we can see how our OKRs help us align with our vision. Again, we have uh, improved customer success as our organizational goal. We have improved first contact resolution. That's our team, right? Our team goal or part of our group. And then I might even have a personal thing. I need to learn more about this particular skill or understanding of what we're trying to do or technology. So you can see how something that a person does and a team does rolls up to what the organization is trying to achieve. And again, OKRs are an integral part of this, but without a strategy to bring them all together, we actually don't get the outcomes we're trying to achieve. We get these arrows going in different directions, or we get a leaning tower instead of a straight tower. And all of these things are really super important because it helps us align literally to our mission and vision, but it also helps us to understand um, if we're working along the, the way what we need to be working on to achieve those goals. Really what's important here more than anything else is that we use OKRs to set our goals, to understand what our progress is, to really understand our conditions of satisfaction, 
and to give us a direction to go in. They're great. I love them. Just they're not a strategic management framework. That's all. And there's lots of examples of how a strategic management framework would help an organization, not just in uh, just, you know, using OKRs, but all of the other aspects of the, of the framework. One of the most important things to understand is that using this framework also helps us align different ways of doing work in an organization. If we have different methodologies for the way we work, OKRs don't care about that. A strategic management framework doesn't care about that. What we care about is, are we achieving our goals? Are we aligned to do that? And so when we have an organization that has different types of ways of doing work, or we have different methodologies that we do, this helps actually bring those pieces together. And ultimately, we align the work we do, the actions we take with the organization strategy so that we can achieve our organizational outcomes and that we, we really think about everyone's needs, not just one group's or another. So what would we do next? Well, we need to make this happen in our organizations. So we want to make sure that we apply a strategic management framework. We want to review our current strategy, if we have one, um, and how OKRs fit in with that, and do our OKRs now fit in to our framework that we're trying to achieve. We really need to know how and where OKRs can help us be better connected to organizational goals. Because again, OKRs are great, but they're not actually a strategy. And conflating OKRs with strategy is really what we're trying to um, just give more information about because they're not the same thing. They're a tool that we use to help deliver that strategy. So I appreciate everybody listening uh, for the last little while. And uh, I'd love to answer questions if you have any. So let's see. Ah, so uh, let's see. Uh, can OKRs be categorized based on the strategic themes? Absolutely. So when we have a strategic management framework and we have our strategic themes, strategic themes are kind of the, the big focal areas that we're working on at any given time for the next foreseeable future. So for instance, if, I, if you look at Microsoft or uh, Google or Amazon right now, they each have strategic themes that are aligned with AI. They have strategic themes that are aligned with cloud. They have strategic themes aligned with uh, sharing information. So uh, yes, absolutely, you'd want your OKRs to align with that. And um, OKRs, uh, st traditional strategic objectives that consist of KPIs and initiatives, these don't replace that. It's just another way of writing it. So when you have your OKR, it's just more of a format than anything else. You still have to talk about your performance metrics because if we're running a program, I need to know my capacity. I need to know my throughput. I need to know my quality. I need to know if my people are actually working at the level we need to work at. I need to know if my systems are performing well. So these are uh, OKRs are augmented by these things. Uh, and then we have to define what our initiatives are. So our OKRs are, again, our initiatives or projects, the work we do actually bring it. The difference between strategic KPIs and OKRs, it's really semantics here. So what we're really saying is KPIs are measuring the, the uh, most KPIs are talking about, or many of them are talking about leading indicators, how our system is working now, or we can measure later how, what our performance was. Um, OKRs, again, is a way just to uh, format that in a different way. They're just as important. Um, so <laughs> management frameworks that suggest uh, um, frameworks that better suit OKRs philosophy. Well, I don't think there's, so obviously I'm gonna say the balanced scorecard is the way I do it. I mean, that's really what we do. And, and I think that really works well. So OKRs fit very neatly into that methodology. Frankly, any methodology that requires you to define what objectives you're trying to achieve have, uh, you can utilize OKRs. It really doesn't preclude them. Um, tier two scorecards needing all four perspectives. Um, yes. So in, for our methodology, yes. Um, it's important to make sure that we're considering those things. That doesn't mean when it's tier two that um, all of those things that come from tier one are going to tier two, but each group in tier two, uh, our finance, our marketing, all those folks, absolutely. So OKRs are both uh, uh, strategic and a tactical, right? They, they actually bridge that, that gap. So objectives are, help us align with what we're doing, what we're trying to achieve in the organization. 
Our key results tell us what we're going to measure and where we want to be. So it tells us our objective, which is our strategic goal. And then our key results actually help us align on the next level down our tactical, what do we do to achieve these things? So they're a really great bridge between those two things. You want to know why we set those four dimensions. So those four dimensions are important because previously, if or if you don't follow a framework like our balanced scorecard framework, it's very easy to forget why we're doing what we're doing and how it impacts what we're trying to impact. And what we're basically saying is that no matter what you do in the organization, you might say, let's increase revenue by 25%. Say that's a financial that goes in the finance perspective, right? That's a financial metric. Well, how do you achieve that? It just doesn't appear. Finance, it just doesn't, uh, uh, there's a finance thing. It really starts with our ability to do what we do, the people we, we have and the systems we have and the work that we do. So that's really why we talk about our people at the bottom, our organizational capability and capacity. So to get to that financial objective, what do people need to do? Do we need to learn new skills? Do we need new uh, technology? Do we need some combination of those things? Is our process suited to or optimized for this financial objective that we're trying to achieve? So we have to consider, is our process good enough? And then we can achieve that financial objective. And then we can see if that affects our consumer, right? Because ultimately it's about our customers. So that's why we have those objectives. It's not just, um, just about uh, just the finance outcome. It's about all of those things to get to it. So again, OKRs uh, and KPIs are not mutually exclusive. I think you need OKRs to tell you these things. You need KPIs to tell us different things. So we combine them together. I don't think there's uh, one or the other. I think you need both. OKRs, more than anything else, is a, a methodology of how we actually write our results and then also how we cascade those two things. But again, that's what we want to do, but we just wanna add that organizational element. Let's see. Ah, oh, when do we create our OKRs? We create OKRs when we create our strategic plan. Uh, usually that's yearly, that's great. Um, the fact is we can set our strategic, our long-term strategic goals. Uh, and so that's three to five years. We can have three to five year objectives. Then we bring them down to yearly. What are we actually going to do this year to achieve them? And then we can actually look at them quarterly. How are we doing? Are we on track? The goal here ultimately is to achieve the objective, uh, to satisfy the conditions of, uh, of what we're trying to achieve. So once we've done that, we can either bring in a new objective or move on to the next most important thing that we're trying to achieve. Uh, would there be a difference in developing OKRs when using a project management approach and implementing a strategic plan uh, compared to the balanced scorecard approach? The important thing I'm trying to get at here is that OKRs in and of themselves aren't necessarily aligned to your organizational results or your organizational outcomes. They might be aligned to your departmental outcomes. They might be aligned to your team outcomes. But more often than not, when we apply OKRs and we say, um, we're doing strategy, we're really not aligning them to the whole org. So that's really the difference between those things is that as long as you're aligning your uh, ultimately to your vision, your organizational vision, then uh, which approach you use is fine. Um, that's the important part. And yeah, there are lots of connections between OKRs and KPIs. Again, KPIs are usually managing uh, what we're doing, the, the efficiency of our system, as opposed to the value and the impact we're trying to deliver. So, great. Uh, that looks like, oh, any more questions? Let's see. I think that's about it. So I'd just like to say thank you to everybody. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out. You can find me at uh, aash at strategymanage.com when we send out our uh, the the link for our our, our webcast. We will uh, also add the information is if you want to get in touch. And I'd love to, to talk to you and uh, answer more questions whenever you, uh, you know, reach out. Thanks a lot.